We are going to the book, The Blessed Valley. We left off on page number five. Uh, before we begin, I want to thank all of those who donated to give books to those who could not uh, afford it or purchase one themselves. Alhamdulillah, everyone that needed, that reached us, we were able to give everyone a book. So everyone that reached out to us, uh, you, you should have got a response by now and your book was sent off. Uh, inshallah, there is two more books that will be sent out in the morning. But everyone, alhamdulillah, thank you for being family to one another and supporting one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your support. And of those who receive a book, don't forget to make dua for those who gave towards your efforts and your studies and benefit and use it and practice it, right? So that they would give the reward of everything you do, you know? Because you will get the reward for what you do and they will get the reward for you what you do and it won't decrease your reward in the least, right? So please, please, Make use of it in the best ways, inshallah ta'ala. Now, let us begin. The author, may Allah ta'ala have mercy on him, said, Notice how nowadays, whenever you recite the first part of the hadith, I have left among you that which if you hold on to firmly, you will never go astray, the book of Allah ta'ala and and ask the audience to complete it, they are sure to say, and my sunnah, despite the fact that this version of the hadith is extremely weak, while the versions saying the book of Allah Ta'ala and my family, the people of my house, are the authentic hadiths with strong chains of transmission narrated by Muslim, Tirmidhi, Ahmed, and numerous others. Ahmed related in which book, this hadith in which book, Imam Ahmed related the hadith in which book, Allah in his musnad, right? And I'm doing this so that we keep going. At Tirmidhi related in which book? And his sunan. And Imam Muslim in which book? Naam, and it's Sahih. Good, go ahead. So these are first stages. We're getting familiar with the books. The next stages, we're going to actually be in the books and knowing where to find the hadith in the books. And then the next stage, we're going to know what the scholars who commentated on those books said about that. I want to give us something. We have to begin as a collective group to stop learning our religion by kila wa qal. In another way, by he say, she say. We want to actually begin the process as a habit among us of verifying our knowledge. Two original sources. We're going to begin that habit. 
uh, we need to do it and eventually get to the point to say, I don't know unless I can document it. I know where our sources are. I'm sure, I'm not guessing. That's where we have to get. It's gonna take time, but let's start laying the foundations so that we do that. One of the biggest problems that we have is uh, we don't know how to document our religious knowledge. So anyone tells us anything at any time from any place and it's become a habit. So let's slowly get to the point where we know our original sources and then we know how to navigate through them in time, inshallah. But let's start the process. Now, go ahead. A glance at the history of Muslim sainthood will reveal that the great majority of saints is al wilaya so we, we we said the wali al wilaya that's the status of being a wali or a waliya or from among the awliya so when we use that term right we're talking about the status of al wilaya no will reveal that the great majority of saints across the centuries were and still are descendants of Imam Hassan and Imam, Imam Hussein, radiallahu anhuma, a small minority being descendants of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, a smaller one still from the other companions. The actual fulfillment- So here, the saints, we mean Wali, right? We mean Wali of Allah. So most of the awliya are from the lineage, historically, of Al Hassan and Al Hussein, and some from the lineage of Abu Bakr. That is their lineage, right? And this book is mostly talking about the awliya from the lineage of Imam Hussein, the son of Ali, Now, The actual fulfillment of the prophecy was not sufficient to convince those who follow their passions rather than the truth and there have appeared those who would deny it. Mm -hmm. To render things unequivocally clear and spread his favors across the nation, Allah Ta'ala gave the exposition of the outward knowledge of Islam to other than Ahlul Bayt. Thus Meaning the physical knowledge of the sacred law was not necessarily taken from the Alil Bayt. So you'll find most of the scholars of the outward aspects of the sacred knowledge were not from Alil Bayt, right? So when we talk about all these great Imams, most of them in the outward knowledge were not Alil Bayt. Now, Thus, none of the great jurists, traditionists, Quran commentators, grammarians, and so on were Sharifs, and in fact, a major proportion, a major proportion of them were not Arabs. Sharifs here refer to descendants of the Prophet. So you can say a Sayyid and a Sharif. And in general, it can both of them are descendants of the prophet, but sometimes they refer from someone from the seed of uh, uh, Hassan and some Hussein, right? But in general, when you say it, it can mean from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, so like Imam al Bukhari, for instance, was not from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Hanifa was for not 
from the family of the Prophet. Most of those great Imams of Hadith, they were not from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their bloodline. Now, it was reserved to the Sharifs to remain the repositories of the inward meaning of the Quran, the very essence of the revelation. They no. were the Sufi masters who took their disciples along the path to the divine presence. It is rather rare after the early generations to find a Sufi who is not a Sharif or the, or the disciple of a Sharif. Thus, it is that those who wish to attack Aqlubayt do so by camouflaging their attacks as being against Sufi innovations. In reality, they are only attempting... Aqlubayt and Tasawwuf were always connected. So, in a way, to have enmity toward Aqlubayt is also to have an enmity towards Tasawwuf. And through that door, they can deny Aqlubayt. Mm. In reality, they are only... In reality, they are only attempting to destroy the essence of Islam by weakening the Muslims' attachment and respect for the custodians of the essence of the Quran. The Shi'i, on the other hand, went the opposite way, glorifying Akhlavayt to the point of attributing the sayings of their imams the same authority as to the prophetic hadiths. So, as in other matters, there's always extremes. The extreme on one end is to vilify the family of the Prophet Sallallahu and to discourage their rank. The extremism on the other end is to put them to the rank of prophetic uh, status and infallibility. What is Ahl Sunnah is the middle to recognize their rank while also not exaggerate in that. Now, However, throughout these vicissitudes, the leaders among the descendants of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein remained beacons illuminating the middle way, defending themselves against their enemies while discouraging extremism in the other direction among their supporters. And this is very important. And as we study this book, you're going to learn a lot about al Bayt and about that middle way, that balance, that has been continuous, right? And from learning that, we should always follow the middle way, right? Once we see the middle way, we should follow it. Mm. One of the purest lineages of the people of the house is that of the Ba'alawi Sayyids of Hadramaut the house that produced the now well-known in the West, Imam al-Haddad and his family. Here, uh -huh. so of all the lineages of the Prophet Sallallahu from al Hussein and al Hassan, all of those lineage, the one that is among the purest, no doubt in it, being a lineage of the Prophet, from son, father to son, the father to son, father to son, all the way back to the Prophet is the Ba'alawi lineage. It is established. And one of the great scholars who lived in the beginning of the 13th century, who died in the beginning of the 13th century, the great Hafiz and linguist, Muhammad Murtada al Zabidi, he himself mentioned that. And he wrote about it, this pure lineage of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu from the Ba'alawi Sayyids, right? Asada al Ba'alawi. He mentioned the purity of their lineage. And he actually learned and took from that route. So I want to give you why is that significant that I'm mentioning him? Because he said, that is the great Hafiz, Muhammad Murtada al Zabidi, he died in the year 1205 after Hijra. He said, There is no scholar or any book about Islam except that I have an unbroken chain of narration to them or the book. Subhanallah. 
So this is a person who knows to make that statement. He knows, right? So that is a, uh, a good indication of the truthfulness of the statement. Nam. The Ba'alawi tradition and chains of transmission remain unbroken to this day. And here, the Ba'alawi way, which is preserved, and the Asanid, the chains of transmission, are connected and unbroken to this day, right? And what makes it so easy is that it's from father to son in a direct bloodline of the Prophet That is not the only chains of narration for that uh, tradition. However, that is a main uh, way of understanding that tradition through its chains of narration, which are many, as well as chain of narration in general from other than the Ba'alawi Sayyids. As Abdullah ibn Mubarak mentioned, as Imam Muslim mentioned in the introduction of his Sahih, that the chain of narration is a part of the religion. And if it is not for the chain of narration, then anyone can say about the religion whatever they want. And one of the honors, favors of Allah that we are happy about is that we are connected to that chain of narration from that family from multiple routes. And that is a, a ni'mah that we thank Allah all the time to have that connection and to know it. For, for me, myself, it is being an African-American, being a black man, having our lineage stripped by blood to have that, that lineage connected, reconnected through religion and through the bloodline of the Prophet Wasallam feels like I never lost anything. It is like you took something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded us with something better. as a reward for the difficulties we faced. So even though we lost our physical bloodline and heritage and lineage, we were given a spiritual lineage, a religious lineage from the bloodline of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is sufficient as a lineage so that we would, inshallah, be counted among them if we would be pious people. Now, There are currently hundreds of thousands of Alawis all over the world. A and Alawi here does not mean Shia. Alawi here is the bloodline of the Prophet wasallam from the Hadramaut Valley. And Alawi here is referred to one of the great great grandchildren of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose name was Alawi, the son of Ubaidullah, the son of Ahmed bin Isa al Muhajir. So, this Alawi here, why they're called Ba Alawi or Bani Alawi, is related from one of the grandsons of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose name was Alawi ibn Ubaidullah. So not Alawi like the Shia or Alawi in Syria. No, Alawi, the descendants of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who were all Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ashari in Aqidah, Shafi'i in Fiqh, and Sufi. Naam. A good number of whom have been and still are authoritative scholars, and many of whom achieve sanctity, whether or not they reveal to the external observer something of their inner states. 
And this yeah. is a trait of them. Some of them, they reach this high, high status of piety, but they were people who were hidden, right? So most people don't know them. And really this book, this book is the first in English language to introduce us to them. So it's like, may Allah reward the author of giving us an opening to their world, right? And trust me, to put this work together, it took a lot of research, many, 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 many books. And many of those books, not published, manuscripts, handwritten to put this together. This is not, it, it's a very beautiful book as we're looking, right? But what the work that went in to put this together, MashaAllah, may Allah reward him. This was not an easy task, not at all, right? So, alhamdulillah, and I'm happy to be among the first, if not the first, in our communities to read this book together with you. I, I, that is an honor in itself for me, right? To be the first or among the first, I don't know everywhere, everyone, but definitely publicly, I don't know anyone who's doing this besides us in our communities. So that's an honor. That itself is an honor. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us, gave us the tawfiq to do it. And trust me, it took me a while to actually get to do it, to get up the, the need when Allah gives an opening, right? And it is a way I can share some things that I've always wanted to share, but felt shy to share. But now that the book is there, I can talk about what is in the book and add some, alhamdulillah. Naam, go ahead. Their influence in the Islamic world is bound to remain substantial in the foreseeable future, if not as once stated by Imam al-Haddad, rahimahullah, until the appearance of the Mahdi. And I told you, Imam al-Haddad, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad, who died in the year 1132 AH, who was the renewer of his time. He said, the meaning of which is, we have a knowledge that no one would have except Al-Mahdi. Subhanallah. And that is talking about what? This inward knowledge. Because of course the outward knowledge is there. And he had this habit of collecting books, Imam Al-Haddad. And he was asked about it, rare, nice books. He was asked about it. He said that I have them so that if I live, to the time of Al-Mahdi, he will have all the resources he needs. <laughs> SubhanAllah, what kind of outlook. He was thinking long-term, Sayyidina Imam Al-Haddad radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now. It is to illustrate the continuity of their pattern of knowledge and sanctity and connect it to their current influence that this book has been written. The sources for this history are abundant. Some have been printed, but many more remain in manuscript form. As I told you, and some of them, they're so difficult to read, right? Even if you know Arabic, because the way they're written, they're so old. It's like, shh, the script. 
sometimes it's, even reading those books, sometimes it takes us a long time to just figure out sometimes just the writing. Maybe one day I'll show you some of it. I don't think I have anything here. Just to show you the, the writing, like very difficult. Um, so it is a, and many of it, most of it is in manuscript, not printed. So uh, and many of it are no longer available or they're in the houses of scholars who don't let it out or in their libraries. Uh, so it's a lot, it's a lot of work. But I think for us, my personal feeling, having this information uh, would help us in our situation. What we really need, especially the spiritual aspect of it. Because it is that spiritual connection that carries you through calamities and through seditions and through difficulties. So it's very important, right? Now, go ahead. There, one can find biographies of various lengths of eminent Alois. Some of these sources are readily available, while others are only obtained with great difficulty, and others still I have only heard about, but have so far been unable to obtain. And and when they when he says, and others, while others are only obtained with great difficulty, trust me, and he means great difficulty. <laughs> not easy at all and when you finally get your hands on some of the stuff la ilaha illallah, you feel like you just found the whole world because of the difficulty is and even getting one copy almost sometimes impossible. And every time I get a copy, after years sometimes of searching, I, I feel honored. Years, and I'm talking about literally sometimes a decade, sometimes 15 years, some books 20 years. And sometimes you can only get that from the family of that scholar, of that Sayyid, from their family, and they have to let you in. It's not easy. So really appreciate what you're getting here in this book. It, it, it is, subhanAllah, it is a gift. May Allah increase the work of the author and give him a high status with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm telling you, I know this firsthand, firsthand, how difficult this is. Allah, Nam, go ahead. There are Alawi families, such as the Al Atos clan, for instance, who have taken great care to preserve the biographies of their great men, so that the material is so abundant that one has difficulty deciding what difficulty deciding what to include and what not. About certain other clans, scant information exists. 
Many famous and great Aloise have had nothing written about them. My choice of who to include in this book was, was restricted. Therefore, by the availability of adequate sources, then dictated by the wish to mention as many clans as possible and to devote comparable space to each of them, I hope so that- So there are clans here. So you have, in the family of the prophet of this, you have the overall family. Ba'alawi. But in the Ba'alawi family, you have different branches of the family. And in each branch, you have illustrious awliya of Allah. In each branch. So some branches of that family of the Prophet, all of them are from the same lineage, but there are different families among them. And some are well known, some are less known, spread all over the world. And in each family, or you can say tribe or branch of that family, there were those like, Arifun that were exceptional. Now, so, so, the, I, so I can imagine when you're in like you, if you get access, and you're like in a candy store, like a little kid, and you want to know what to pick, but it's so much stuff, and then you have to distinguish between your personal like what you like and what is most beneficial if you're going to do such a work to the masses of people and then at the same time be careful what you mention so that it doesn't become a trial for someone that's a hard job right because things are contextual right and everything that is known is not to be mentioned right? Because you're talking about the elite of the elite of spiritual masters, the elite of the elite. So some stuff just ain't for everybody, right? Because it will be a, a trial for them. For the person whose conviction and realization is complete, then it's not. But for someone who is not there, like the general public, you have to select, right? And to give you the indication of this point, Imam Junaid said, He said, being convinced of this knowledge or this science of ours in itself is sainthood. Just a tasdiq just being convinced, having a firm belief that this is real, itself is a wilaya, without doing the work. So imagine what doing the work is. So may Allah keep us careful in, in, as we read through the book. Naam, go ahead. I hope that in its present form, the book is adequate for its purpose, which is to give a true to life description of the manner in which the members of one of the most important branch of descendants of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him and his family, have understood, preserved, and practiced his religion. Can you read that two more times, because that purpose is the same purpose while we're reading the book. But we want to take from that how we can do the same thing. The purpose of him writing the book is the same purpose we're reading the book with added to that so that we can ourselves do the similar thing in our context. I highly doubt that we in our lifetimes would even come close to what they did, but we could start the process. And then maybe 
a few hundred years down the line, that would be our reality as well, or a portion of it. That's why we're reading the book. And it has already started. So what I'm trying to do in a way, I'm going to put you somewhere most of us will never go. So when those of us who went and who have experience, when they come back, they don't have to work as hard. We're already familiar. Right? So there are those of us who have went and experienced and returned. There are those of us who are experiencing now and they're going to return. So one of the things I would like to see is that we already introduce you. So those who have returned, the job is easier for them. And those who are coming back will have a basis to start. And then inshallah, in a few generations, it is our norm, inshallah. And that is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, go ahead. I'm just going to finish up to Imam Ali Zain al Abidin. Do you want me to reread the last? Yes, two more times, inshallah. I hope that in its present form of the book, excuse me, I hope that in its present form, the book is adequate for its purpose, which is to give a true to life description of the manner in which the members of one of the most important branch of descendants of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him and his family, have understood, preserved, and practiced his religion. I hope that in its present form, the book is adequate for its purpose, which is to give a true to life description of the manner in which the members of one of the most important branch of descendants of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him and his family, have understood, preserved, and practiced his religion. Let, let us stop here, matter of fact, because we're over the time and I need to stop, start on time and finish on time because our time is between seven and eight. Uh, sometimes I extend, but I would rather us keep the time short so that we can preserve as much, so it's not too much information, uh, inshallah. Uh, and we can take it stage by stage. So alhamdulillah, inshallah ta'ala. I know some of you are still looking for books. Uh, but right now, I think we're out of books, but I, I, I have some more. I just have to get, get, get them in my possession. So give me a few days, inshallah, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll have some more, but it's going to take me a few days. Um, but I do have some more, uh, but I don't have them in my possession. I have to get them. Uh, so just keep me, send uh, those who are still looking for books. Uh, just send me your name so that I know how many I need. And those who can uh, purchase them, distinguish from those who can purchase them and those who need help getting it. Please let me know which one is because that's going to determine as well, right? Uh, so please uh, you send, uh, send, you know, so even though you cannot order anymore, just send it that you're waiting so that I put a rush on it, that I know I don't have to uh, um, please send a message. If you put it here, I'm not going to remember. I, um, send a message to info at mmacinc.org, right? or info at mmacinc.org. Don't tell me on here, I'm going to forget, right? So please use that email and send the message. 
If you try to think I'm going to remember, I'm not. My mind is not like you think. <laughs> I'm not going to remember. I'm going to forget. Uh, yes, Javina, your book is on the way. Someone took care of you. May Allah reward uh, all of you again for your support. And those who want to help, let me give you the link again, because it is kind of pricey, but trust me, I've paid much more for far less. <laughs> you know, uh, so to give a book and donate a book for those, just go there and you can make your own. Um, you can make your um, contribution there. And we would, uh, as we get um, the finances, we'll support uh, you know, whoever we can, as best as we can, as a family. Uh, yeah, so don't think that this is, for what, what you're paying the money for this, to get the information you have in here, I'm not exaggerating to you. I've spent over $10,000. To get just the information you have in here, I've spent over $10,000 easily. Easily. I'm talking about just money. I ain't talking about traveling the cost besides that. I'm talking about just getting the material. I've spent over ten thousand dollars, so you're getting a break. Trust me. Not if you had to go through what I had to go through to get what you're getting right now. La ilaha illallah. So remember, we was talking about favors from Allah. Count this book as a favor of Allah to you, and thank the author. Really, I'm telling you, it's not easy. So inshallah, let's make it happen. And I want to spread it, inshallah, so that the book is one thing, but then you're getting the access of more information and more explanation to make it clear. That's a whole nother story. So. May Allah put blessing in our work. Barakallahu Bikum tonight. Black Imam's round table is going to be, inshallah, on fire. Very important talk tonight, continuing from the Black Imam's round table in Washington, DC. Uh, I already have my notes. So this is just all points. I don't know if we're going to have the time to do all of this, but we have a lot for tonight. Tonight is going to be nice, inshallah. Uh, so please, lastly, and I'll have this talk with Imam of the Boombat. I'll, I'll have to do this. I know we're hitting y'all up all over the place, right? But if I get myself in trouble, as much support that you can give to Masjid Muhammad of Atlantic City, please do it. 
go to the site, become a monthly donor. It helps facilitate a lot of the work we're doing. Hundreds of people are being reached through these platforms. Hundreds of people all around the world are benefiting from the work that Masjid Muhammad of Atlantic City is facilitating, right? And we have a lot more to do. There are not many people doing what we are doing. We have a very important work that we're doing. And it does require support. So please, don't forget Masjid Muhammad, who hasn't forgot you. Because they facilitate all of the stuff that we do. Masjid Muhammad. The seminars, free. Feeding, free. They do a lot and have been doing a lot as a community, right? So please lend your support. They carry the vast majority of the burden of what we're doing. The round table, Masjid Muhammad is carrying a lot of that. So help their staff working. We need your support, right? So we can continue, so we can do more. Uh, you know, inshallah, we have a lot to do. Every time we come on, some new person, a few new people are like, I'm learning about the 3453 family. We want to become a part. We're trying to follow. Can you come to our area? Can you help? We have a lot of that. And for the amount we're receiving, what little we can give is, is minimal, really, but it can help a lot. So please consider being a monthly donor, right? And you can go uh, on the site as you do, and you can set it up. Or you can send an uh, email and we'll have one of our staff members contact you uh, to set it up for you if you don't know how to do it. So if you don't know how to do it, you can do it on, 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 the, on the website of the masjid. You can do it uh, through the PayPal, right? Or just send an email and tell them you want to do it and they will contact you and set it up for you. Uh, so you can send it to uh, info at mmacinc.org and our staff will facilitate it for you. Even if it's small, is enough of us. If everybody do a little, nobody has to do a lot, right? If everyone does a little, no one has to do a lot, right? And we can facilitate all what we're trying to do. There are way more than 60 people. That's 60 people you see, Hamza. It's way more than that. You got to figure all the different channels. So may Allah make it work, inshallah. Barakallahu bikum wa sallallahu alayhi sayyidin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. We'll see you tonight on the Black Imams Roundtable. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.